Now before we get into making the famous gnocchi alla sorrentina, soft pillowy gnocchi in sweet tomato sauce tossed in mozzarella and baked to a cheesy perfection, we first need to make the gnocchi. So let's just jump right into it. Now before we deal with the potatoes, I preheated my oven to 425 degrees. I'm just gonna take a fork and start to poke holes into the potatoes. This is just gonna allow steam to escape while they cook. And we're gonna bake them because sort of the enemy of a good gnocchi is moisture. So by baking them instead of boiling them, we're just removing that much more moisture from the process. We're just gonna oil them, salt them, and then we're gonna throw them in the oven. So we're just gonna toss these into the oven and let them bake for about an hour or so. After an hour, get them out and assess the situation. So basically what I'm looking for is to take a cake tester or even a thermometer works great as a cake tester. I wanna insert it and remove it without any resistance. This is the biggest one too, so I'm measuring this one. And if we insert it and check the temperature, it's around 208 degrees. That's what we call a perfect baked potato. It's too hot now to deal with, so we're gonna set it off to the side and allow it to chill. To form the gnocchi, we want them warm, but if they're too hot, since we're working with egg, that's no good. So while they kind of cool down, we can get started on our tomato sauce. We got my Bianco Di Napoli tomatoes. These are, of course, my favorite tomatoes. California grown. California has the most sunny days of almost any place on earth. It's why wine is great from California. It's also why they grow great tomatoes. So instead of getting tomatoes from San Marzano, which are often frauds, I like to buy my tomatoes domestic. I know the owners of this company, they are beautiful people too, so it's a win-win. Into a food mill to create our nice smooth tomato puree or passata. I actually like to use a glove and with my hand just kind of break up the tomatoes while I'm pouring them in so they're easier for the food mill to process. Up. See, you gotta watch out for squirters. Now just get those tomatoes pureed. We wanna make sure that we get as much of that puree out of those tomatoes as possible. So I'm just gonna run a spatula underneath, scrape up all that pulp, and then just keep milling the tomatoes, try and get as much of it out as possible. And we're gonna set that off to the side, and what I wanna show you is one of my favorite things about the spring. Now when you go to the store most of the time and buy garlic, you're buying a variety of garlic called soft neck. And what it has is lots of little layers, and as you get deeper, you get smaller and smaller garlic cloves. They're kind of useless and annoying. But when you go to the farmer's market this time of year, you're gonna get fresh garlic. This is a piece of garlic that had its whole green part on and I cut it off along with the root and I allowed it to dry. When I bought it, the skin was still soft and moist. You can almost just peel it off like an orange skin. And the hard neck, instead of growing in lots of layers in descending size, it grows in one layer around the stem, providing basically equal sized garlic cloves all around that are bigger, in my opinion, have a better flavor and it's just a better way to eat garlic. You buy it fresh, it sits in a cool, dark place, it dries out, and it lasts for months. And then the clove itself is wrapped in this paper that's still drying out. And it's almost so easy to peel, it just peels right off without any problem. But you'll see them, you can stock up on them at the farmer's market, and you have the best garlic, way fresher than you can get in the store all summer long. You see these big, beautiful, juicy garlic cloves? You wanna cut them in half and then slice them really finely. Now while the potatoes continue to cool, we can prepare the tomato sauce. This recipe is for about two, so I'm gonna get a small pot of water up to a boil. Off to the side, I've got my saucier that I'm gonna prepare my tomato sauce on. In the saucier, I'm gonna add enough oil to cover the bottom of the pan. Let that oil heat up on high heat. And once that oil is hot, I'm gonna add in the garlic cloves. I'm gonna cook the garlic cloves in that oil and I wanna get them lightly browned around the edges. And while that happens, I'm gonna snip a little basil off. I'm gonna pick some of the leaves off the stem and I'm gonna add the stem to the oil to infuse the oil with that garlic. Once the garlic is starting to brown around the edges, we can go ahead and add our tomato passata. Hit that with a little bit of salt, bring that up to a boil, drop it down to a simmer, and we're just gonna let that cook for about 20, 25 minutes. So like I said, I'm gearing up for another trip to Italy, to the Amalfi Coast for my friend's wedding, which I'm super excited for. Can't you see it on my face? Well, one thing I struggle with when I travel is a little bit of overwhelm, like, what do I do when I'm there? And that's why I love today's sponsor, Viator. Viator's mission is to bring extraordinary, unexpected, and memorable experiences to more people more often, wherever they're traveling, wherever they are. Viator has something for everyone, with over 300,000 travel experiences with millions of real traveler reviews. When you book a travel experience with Viator, there's always flexibility and support with free cancellation, payment options, and 24-7 service. Viator's detailed descriptions and real traveler reviews 
tell you exactly what to expect. So you have the insider information you need to book the best activities for your trip. And when I'm in Positano, I'm by the water. I love the water. I know I'm gonna wanna rent a boat. So I'll go to the Amalfi Coast section on Valle Tour and boom, I found a really nice Amalfi Coast boat tour for a small group that I can then surprise the bride and the groom with. And I also may make a stop in Florence, my second home. And I've never had a VIP tour of some of the city's best sites. So I might grab this VIP Duomo Academia Gallery tour that also allows me to skip the line to go all the way up to the Duomo for one of the most beautiful views in the world. So to book amazing travel experiences for your next vacation, head on over to Viator and book now. Now the potatoes are still hot. What I'm gonna do to cool them down a bit quicker is cut them open just like you would a baked potato open them up and then I'm gonna just score the inside, allow some of that steam to escape. And while it continues to cool down a little bit more, I can get our egg ready. I'm gonna take one egg, I'm gonna get that beaten really well. And then this recipe is gonna call for about two cups of flour. I'm just gonna measure one right now. That second cup will get slowly worked in during the kneading process. Next we gotta do is we gotta rice the potatoes. This is a potato ricer, so I'm just gonna work them through here. If you don't have that, you can push them through a colander like this. That should mash them up nice. So I'm just gonna scoop out some of that potato into the ricer. It fits about one potato at a time, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and rice that onto the board. Then I'll flatten out that mound just so that steam can escape and cool down quicker, and go ahead and rice that second potato. Potato skins are a nice little snack too. I'm gonna hit it with some salt. Now it's cool enough, I can add the egg directly into the potatoes. Take that beaten egg and just try and pour it and distribute it evenly across all the potatoes. And then we can sprinkle in that first cup of flour into the mix. And then I'm gonna take a bench scraper and start folding that flour into the potatoes. And once it comes into a ball, I'm gonna start to gently knead it. And immediately I can tell I need that extra cup of flour. So I'm just gonna pour that in and begin to cut that flour into the dough. Now I'm gonna take my hands and I'm gonna start to knead the dough. Now I don't wanna knead it like a normal semolina or egg pasta dough. I'm gonna knead it a little bit more gently. I'm not trying to work as much gluten into this dough. Some recipes in Italy will call for kneading it until gluten develops for like a stuffed regional pasta. And I've experienced with using less flour and more flour. Since there is no right and wrong, generally if you add too little flour, the gnocchi can be gummy. That's generally not good, but the more flour you add, the firmer and denser they will become, which you may want for the gnocchi that you might be toasting. They can be a bit heavier though. So we don't want to act too much gluten with this recipe. We just wanna work enough flour in so that the dough is soft and pillowy and slightly tacky, but not sticky. If it's sticky, just add a little bit more flour until it's not. And once the dough comes together, now we can form the gnocchi. I'm gonna take about a quarter of the dough at a time. I'm gonna be generous with the flour and sprinkle it over that piece of dough and then roll it out into a rope about the size and thickness of your thumb. And I'm gonna take that bench scraper, I'm gonna use my thumb and just sort of measure about a thumbnail size of the dough and go through and cut your little pieces of gnocchi. Once they're all cut up, I'm gonna coat them with flour and you can stop here and have beautiful gnocchi, but I like a little ridge to mine, so I'm gonna use a gnocchi board. I'm gonna take a piece of the gnocchi and I'm gonna use my palm to gently roll that ridge into the gnocchi to form these little lines that run across it. Dust them with flour and then transfer them over to a sheet tray with some flour in it to make sure that they don't stick. And then go through and roll out the rest of the gnocchi. I'm only gonna roll out about half the dough, which will serve a about two people, depending on how much you eat. This whole batch of dough should feed three-ish people, four-ish people, depending on how big your appetites are. Now in between Naples and the Amalfi Coast is where you find the subject of today's recipe, Sorrento, smack dab in the middle, with Capri just right off the coastline. This region of Italy is called Campania, a region that's known for many things, but one of which is Fior di Latte or Bufala Mozzarella. Bufala Mozzarella seems to be a lot easier for me to find here than it is to find Fior di Latte. The mozzarella di Bufalo is made of buffalo milk rather than the Fior di Latte that is made with cow's milk. It has more fat than Fior di latte. It simply has that taste of Italy, and since it's of the region, we're going to be using it today. So I'm just gonna cut the mozzarella on a paper towel to absorb some excess moisture. Cut into slices, then cut those slices into thick little strands like this. If you don't have access to this mozzarella, you can use whatever fresh mozzarella you have access to. Now to avoid any excess flour in the pasta water, I'm gonna take the gnocchi and place them in a strainer and just dust off any of the excess flour. Then over at the stove, I have a pot of water boiling. I'm gonna season it with salt, and then I'm gonna drop the gnocchi 
in and give them a stir. Once they float after two to three minutes, they're done. Now our sauce is ready. I'm gonna push that to the back burner and get a new pan on the stove to bring it all together. Get it onto a medium heat and allow it to get hot. Keep the gnocchi moving and once that pan is hot, I'm gonna add about three ladles of the tomato sauce into that clean pan. To the sauce, I'm going to add those fresh basil leaves from the stem we picked earlier. And now I can see the gnocchi are starting to float. So I'm going to fish them out and I'm gonna get them into the pan with the sauce. Now I just wanna marry the sauce with the gnocchi so that each gnocchi is coated with the sauce. I'm gonna give it one last taste for seasoning and then I'm gonna finish it with a little grated Parmigiano Reggiano and then I'm gonna toss in a whole bunch of that fresh mozzarella. I'm trying to add like the worst ugliest slices to the pasta itself and I'm gonna leave the best looking slices to place on top before baking. Now just mix it all together until the mozzarella becomes all melty and stringy just like this. Now it's ready to be baked. I'm just gonna transfer that mixture to a baking dish. Use a spatula, make sure you get all that sauce and cheese in there. Get it on top of a sheet tray, hit it on top with some grated parm, and then I'm gonna add those final slices of mozzarella to the top. But I'm gonna place them almost like I'm making a Neapolitan pizza. I want it all to melt a certain way, to have space in between, and, and to be able to see the gnocchi. You can add more, but there's just a look in my head that I'm trying to achieve. Now toss that into a preheated 450 degree oven and bake for about 20 minutes or so, rotating halfway until the sauce is bubbly and the cheese is fully melted. Then remove it from the oven, allow it to cool slightly, Add some fresh basil on top and let's see how we did. The gnocchi are tender and light, but they have structure. The key characteristic of this dish is this stringy, melty mozzarella when you go to take a bite. And the taste resembles that of a Neapolitan pizza, except it's gnocchi, which isn't too surprising considering Sorrento and Naples are practically neighbors. This dish is an incredible taste of what Campania has to offer and it's a must try dish this summer. It's magical. It's just one of those Italian things that make you wonder how something so simple could be so good. A summer dish you must try. Recipe is going to be down in the description. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.